This topic is on generalized anxiety disorder and it follows NICE guidelines of 2017. GAD is defined as excessive worry and feelings of fear, dread and uneasiness that lasts for six months or longer. Symptoms can be classified into physical and psychological symptoms. Physical symptoms include shortness of breath, palpitations and muscle tension, while psychological symptoms include restlessness, sense of dread and having difficulties concentrating. There are many different organic diseases that can present similar to GAD, and these include cardiac conditions like arrhythmias, respiratory ones like asthma, and others such as hyperthyroidism, anemia, and drug-induced, which includes caffeine, salbutamol, cocaine, steroids, and alcohol or opioid withdrawals. That is why it's important for you to rule out these organic causes by performing routine bloods, TFTs, ECG, and a drug review. For objective quantification of GAD, the Generalized Anxiety Disorder Questionnaire GAD-7 is often used, as compared to the PHQ-9 Questionnaire for Depression. The official criteria of GAD diagnosis can be done through the DSM-5 or ICD-10 criteria. I feel that these criteria are too technical and may not be as relevant for your exams. However, for those who are interested, DSM-5 criteria include excessive anxiety or worry for more than six months with at least three of these symptoms and it negatively affects the function and activities of daily living and this is not secondary to drugs, medications or other physical disorders. For ICD-10, the criteria is quite similar but patients would require four of any of the physical, psychological symptoms with at least one autonomic arousal symptoms. Like I mentioned, I don't think that you need to memorize the criteria by heart, but just understand that physical and psychological symptoms have to last more than six months, such that it affects function or activities of daily living, and is not secondary to drugs, medications, or organic diseases. NICE guidelines recommend a step care model for GAD. Step one is the identification and education of patients, where patients are made aware of the diagnosis and are educated on the condition. Step two involves low intensity psychotherapies. These include IAPT, which is improving access to psychological therapies, individualized self-help or psychotherapy groups, Step three include high intensity psychotherapies such as CBT, which stands for Cognitive Behavioral Therapy or Applied Relaxation or Drug Treatments. The first line drug treatment recommended is an SSRI, which stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. Examples include citalopram or fluoxetine. Second line recommended is another SSRI or SNRI, which refers to selective serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor, such as duloxetine. An alternative is pregabalin as well. The final step is to refer to secondary care. You should also consider referring to secondary care if there's also a risk of suicide, self-harm or self-neglect. There are multiple drug classes involved in the treatment of GAD. Examples of SSRI include sertraline. Do take note of the side effects of GI bleeding. We would usually avoid prescribing NSAIDs together with it due to the increased risk of GI bleeding. Always give PPI cover if required. SSRIs can also cause sexual dysfunction as well and an increased risk of suicide in the short term. That is why it is important to follow the patients up in one to two weeks to monitor and check for any thoughts of self-harm and suicide. Citalopram can also cause increased QT interval. And do take note of SSRI's withdrawal signs, especially when patients suddenly stop taking their medications. These signs and symptoms include GI symptoms, anxiety, and sleep disturbances. 
The next class is SNRI. Examples include duloxetine, and their side effects is quite similar to that of SSRIs, but of lower frequency. Sometimes, drugs such as beta blockers and benzodiazepines can be used in the short term for acute or psychological symptoms. We have talked about the side effects of beta blockers before. These include postural hypotension, bradycardia, and do be cautious in using them with patients with asthma. Benzodiazepines act on the GABA-A receptors and increases the frequency of chloride channel opening, and this thus reduces the neuronal firing rate. Examples of short-acting ones include medazolam, intermediate acting ones like lorazepam, and long-acting ones like diazepam. Do note of the side effects of drowsiness, respiratory depression, dependence, especially after using for more than a month, and signs of withdrawals as well. To monitor patients with GAD, NICE recommends using an objective test like GAD7 to compare with previous scores. Always check adherence to treatment and always ask if patients have any risk of number one, self-harm, number two, suicide, number three, self-neglect, or number four, any risk to others as well. In conclusion, it's very important to know how to recognize GAD. Remember to route secondary causes, know the step care model, and always look for drug adherence and risks to self and others. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe for more videos.